but our killing of one another is new and that has to be addressed. We need 10,000 fearless men to go inside the black community and stand in between the guns of the gangs and then settle this with conflict resolution and bring peace in our own community. Peace. Welcome to another episode of Muhammad Mines 46 TV. And I want to take this opportunity to give you all an update on the 10,000 Fearless Conflict Resolution Initiative. It has not stopped. There are several cities that are still doing it. And by Allah's grace, we're over 100 successfully resolved conflicts. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show on the screen where you're going to see the percentages of conflicts based upon categories, right? So you see where it has the red, that's severe, right? That's where it involves somebody uh, being injured, bodily injured, maybe possible, I mean, loss of life. You see where it says orange, that's high, where there was violence, but no one lost their life. 15.79% of the incidences are fall within that category. Then you see where it's, where it's yellow, right? 17.54%, where that means there's a fight has taken place, excuse me, some type of weapon has been drawn uh, or whatnot. Then you see where it's blue and you see that's a higher percentage. That's where threats have been made, uh, possibility of the fight and it's 53.51%. And then you see green, that's low. That's where it's just a simple misunderstanding, no threat of violence. Now you, you see where in the blue guarded 53.51%, I like that we like that particular uh, percentage because we see this as a proactive initiative. Like we're not trying to uh, wait till someone loses their life, wait till someone is uh, shot or in the hospital, hospitalized. No, we want to get there early. And let me tell you the reason why we want to get there early. We want to get involved early in these conflicts because the earlier you can become involved in them, the greater the likelihood of you resolving them. And that's why our success rate is so high. Because unfortunately, brothers and sisters, and it's very painful reality, our family members out there, our brothers and sisters, members of our community, are killing each other over nothing. You know, at the very beginning of a lot of these conflicts, the vast majority of these conflicts, they're over nothing. And I'm telling you, they're over nothing. We brought people to the table and they can't even remember why they're even involved in a beef. Now, of course, when somebody gets shot, things get complicated. But before that, as we asked, okay, what happened before somebody got shot? What happened before somebody pulled the gun out on the other person? It's over nothing, right? Over nothing. And there's another stat, but I won't put it up. We also categorize, uh, keep the records on how uh, these conflict mediations are initiated. Did somebody call a hotline? Uh, maybe members of the mediation team knew someone who was involved in a conflict and they got involved, offered their assistance. Or uh, the mediators were out, or brothers and sisters were out in the community and they saw something happen between strangers and they got involved and they were able to mediate it, right? Uh, with the hotline, very few people call a hotline and I understand that because they don't really know who is on the other end of the call. But the largest percentage is personal contact, 53.51%. So like 54% of the conflicts that we resolve came as a result of someone in the community knowing about the work that we're doing with conflict resolution and they gave us a call personally on our phone, hey man, I was at the mines. I know y'all deal with conflict resolution. I'm involved with this. Or somebody I know is involved with, well, involved with a conflict and I told them about you all. Let me tell you why that is so significant. And to me, that is a key ingredient in, the, in regards to having a successful conflict mediation program. It's, it's key because of this. It shows that if you want to have a successful conflict mediation initiative in your city, you have to build relationships with people because as people develop an affinity for you and they trust you, 
then they will open, they'll be more inclined to say, let me call brother so-and-so, let me call sister so-and-so to um, ask them to help me to resolve this conflict that I'm having between myself and somebody else. This is why when I go around and we do trainings in different cities, I always stress to the cities that I've done the trainings in that the next thing that they should do after they have established their conflict mediation team, the next thing that they need to do is hold a community meeting, right? Where people who know about the work that you are doing, you've been doing in your city will come out and at that meeting, you can ask those who have come out to that meeting around the topic of, of stopping the violence. You can ask them, yo, how many of you all will be interested and in, uh, will be willing to allow us to help re resolve a conflict that you may be involved in? That's the key thing. You know, so the work is still going on, brothers and sisters, with the 10,000 fearless. You know, there's a lot more that can be done. And even with this initiative of conflict resolution, I still feel we have not seen the, the full benefits of it yet because there's, there's more that we can do. People can be more active, more consistent. There are more segments of our community, more organizations in our community that we can train with conflict resolution. And they can also begin to have access to those uh, sectors of our community that I may not have access to or somebody else may not have access to, right? And what that shows is, or I will say this, personally with the training that we have done with the conflict resolution, we have trained to date, as of today, 1,259 people in conflict resolution. We went over to over like 25, 26 different cities, but the work still needs to be done. Because this issue dealing with conflict is going to happen. And what I'm realizing, many of our most recent conflict re resolutions have come from um, in these schools. And I'm telling you, when you see the inclination to solve a, uh, a issue with uh, a little simple issue, misunderstanding with violence in these schools, it's no surprise that we are seeing violence in the streets. Because when they're in the schools, they don't have access to weapons. You know, most of the schools you have to go through a check procedure. But when they get out there in the community, they're going to get guns. And they have access to these weapons. And then there are drugs and all of the other stuff. So this work continues on, brothers and sisters. The work of conflict resolution is still uh, on and going and the 10,000 fearless. So if you're interested in having um, conf a conflict resolution training in your city, you know, give me a call. You see the number that's on. We'll place the number that's on the bottom of the, uh, of the uh, screen. And we still are doing our best to make the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan's word bond, but also make our word bond to make our communities safe and decent places to live. So salute to those cities who are still going. Special salute to Austin, Texas, and uh, Colleen, Texas, with our brother, brother Robert and brother uh, Daryl for the work that they're doing because they are really, uh, they are really taking the blueprint and they are really running with it. And you're seeing it with the results that they are doing and the impact that they're having on their city. Just like here in the city of New Orleans, um, you know, the murder rate is going to be the lowest in several amount of years. And I'm not just saying that that's a result of us, but I believe that our work play, plays a role in that as well as the many other organizations and individuals and parents, community members that have worked to uh, reduce this violence in the city. So get with us if you're still interested in um, this conflict resolution uh, initiative being set up in your city. Peace.